Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. My guest today is Terry Rod Larson. He is the president of the International Peace Institute. Thank you very much. My for pleasure. Being. Mr. Rod Larson, uh, you've worked a lot uh, on the Israeli Palestinian peace process, what came to be known as the Oslo uh, process. Obviously, uh, it is in dire straits. Uh, some people say the peace process is actually uh, dead. There's a lot of talk about Donald Trump's so-called deal of the century. How do you view this Israeli-Palestinian file nowadays? Uh, let me <coughs> first comment on, uh, on Oslo. The Oslo agreements are basically the following. It's an ideology. It's the idea of the two-state solution. Uh, as the only viable solution to the Palestinian-Israeli uh, uh, conflict. And then secondly, it is a set of institutions, which is the Palestinian Authority, uh, the, the presidency, the, the various ministries, etc., etc. Et so, so that's the institutional element uh, uh, in it. And then uh, thirdly, it is the mutual recognition of Israel and the Palestinians, where Israel recognized the PLO, as the legitimate representative of the Palestinian people and whereby the PLO recognized the state of Israel. Uh, all this stands, but then there is another element and that's the peace process because what the Oslo Agreement envisaged was a peace process which should last for five years uh, and should then resolve the so-called final status issues which is the issue of Jerusalem uh, which was envisioned, envisioned by many at the time to be the, the capital of two states, the state of Palestine with East Jerusalem as its capital and West Jerusalem as the Israeli, uh, as the Israeli capital. And then it's also the issue of the of return of refugees and it's the issue of where the borders should be and it's the issue of security. Uh, this is now 25 years ago and one of the reasons why... Um, the Oslo process didn't succeed in, within the envisaged time frame is that um, uh, the Israeli government uh, predominantly, but also the Israelis, deviated for the criteria of the Oslo agreement. And this has displayed one uh, fundamental flaw in the, uh, in the agreement, namely that there was no monitoring mechanism where uh, the parties um, could be held accountable for not implementing what they had signed on. Right. I mean, you're saying the Israelis are mostly to blame for the failure to make this agreement a reality on the ground? I mean, both parties have deviated on many accounts to the agreement. And um, uh, over the last few years, uh, over the last several years, there hasn't actually been a peace process because uh, the parties have never, for real, met at the table trying to resolve the issues, which means that uh, uh, the Oslo um, peace process, where implementation started in earnest uh, after uh, 1994 uh, for several years, uh, the, the last attempt, the so-called Hebron uh, Agreement, which was consistent with, with Oslo, but after that, by and large, there's been a deviation from the, uh, the guidelines uh, of... Mostly Oslo. by Israel. Uh, by both parties, but uh, it is uh, the Israelis over the last few years who has actually refused to go to the table. And if you don't go to the table, uh, you, can't, uh, you, you can't address the issues. If you go to the table, you can address the issues. And of course, uh, 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 Israel's move... Uh, uh, sorry, the American uh, move of uh, the embassy, the U.S. embassy from Tel Aviv to uh, to Jerusalem, uh, in, a, in a way, <coughs> had an effect that it wasn't so that the issue was taken off the table, but the table was taken out of the room, right. uh, which means that now the Palestinians don't want to go to the table because of this. So, uh, uh, so the peace I, process is dead. So, I mean, the peace process of the last few years has had nothing with the Oslo process to do, uh, but there, there was a peace process, but now there isn't a peace process. So, and, and of course now, um, 
there is a, a U.S. attempt to put the peace process back again. Is it really a U.S. attempt? Because the Palestinians say it's dead on arrival, it's not an attempt, they're just fooling with us. I think the, uh, the intent is good and for real. Uh, uh, the last initiative being to, to have a, uh, an economic workshop uh, in the country of uh, Bahrain. In Is Manama. it a good initiative? The Palestinians are furious and, about this. Uh, it's, I mean, I haven't read the, the proposals. I can't uh, possibly comment uh, on it. But what I've seen in, uh, from media and interviews, etc., is that it's only the economic issues without the political parameters to be addressed. This has been tried many, many times before. Uh, under uh, a slogan, uh, namely uh, economic peace, and it has every time turned out that, that it doesn't work. So in a way, this is nothing new. It's inventing a wheel which has been invented many times before. And it's but it's a recipe for failure. It, it, it has proved to, to be a wheel which doesn't function. But if there is a willingness to put the political framework around uh, uh, discussing the, the uh, economic issues, uh, definitely uh, the, the Palestinians who should seriously consider participating uh, uh, in it, they don't have to agree what is put on the table, but they can look at it and then they can say we disagree or we agree on so something. So you would encourage them on, to on take on a look? Because yeah, but I do fully understand that it's very difficult for them to do it without having a discussion of the political parameters because then it, it, it would be a kind of political suicide because... Um, then it will look as, as if the Palestinians are selling their um, uh, identity as citizens of a future state. Uh, so unless you understand that the, for the Palestinians, uh, the political issue is not an economic issue, it's an issue of identity, and Palestinian identity is glued to the notion of the establishment of a Palestinian state. Right, but there's now talk by the Palestinians of cutting off security cooperation with Israel, even of withdrawing the recognition uh, that you mentioned earlier. Are you afraid that the institutions that were built that are very frail could actually collapse in the near future? I mean, uh, these um, uh, notions and opinions have come up very regularly from the Palestinian side uh, over the last uh, 10 years, uh, and it's, it's never come to fruition. So you don't really so, believe uh, they'll do it? Uh, I mean, for, for paradoxically, even if I fully understand the pain on the, uh, the Palestinian side, um, uh, paradoxically, uh, if, if they dismantle uh, the, the Palestinian Authority, as they say, go and give the keys to... Uh, to the government buildings, uh, to the, the Israeli prime minister, I mean, then they will have to go in exile again. Uh, and they have to go back to where they were before the, the Oslo Accords. They were branded as a terrorist organization, and they were in exile in, uh, in, uh, in Tunis. Uh, there were very little funds coming in. Uh, to so they don't really have a choice, that's what you're saying. I mean, they have a choice. But I think the situation will be much worse for them if they abandon the, the, the Palestinian, uh, the structures of the right. Palestinian uh, Authority and the uh, ideology of the uh, two-state solution. So you think a two-state solution is still possible that the uh, American ambassador to Israel recently in an interview said, you know, Israel could annex parts of the West Bank. I mean, this would seem like it's the burial of the two-state solution, if I mean, this happens. I think uh, here... And it's uh, not an Israeli official, it's an American official uh, supposed to mediate. Uh, to use the Scandinavian uh, uh, metaphor, uh, I think they're skating on very thin ice here, because if Israel takes control over the West Bank, maybe also of Gaza again, who knows, then they will have the full legal, social and economic responsibility for those areas hospitals, social services, security, infrastructure, livelihood, uh, um, uh, employment, etc. Uh, and I think that would be an absolute nightmare for Israel. So I think this, is a, this would be a lose-lose situation. It would be very bad for, for the Palestinians, and it will be very bad for the, Isra the Israelis. Right. Just a very uh, last question. Uh, do you think the turning point was at the very end of the Clinton administration, 2000, when there were those negotiations that nearly 
bore fruit. Do you think this was really when peace was the closest, or do you believe this is maybe... I think it's been very close, actually, uh, many times. This was uh, where the so-called, uh, in the Clinton era, the so-called Camp David uh, negotiations. When they collapsed, it was picked up again uh, through Im immediately afterwards, th through the uh, uh, so-called Taba negotiations in Taba, uh, and they came extremely close to fruition. Uh, and uh, also during Prime Minister Olmert, they, they, would, they again came very, very close. And so what I would have done is that I would have taken one of those deals, even if they were not wholly satisfactory. Speaking and continue, of the Palestinians. Yes, and then continued to, uh, to uh, negotiate on, uh, on that basis. That was the roadmap for peace, which suggested the establishment of a Palestinian state with provisional borders. Uh, and then one could have negotiated. So Arafat for made a borders. mistake. Uh, I think the Palestinian leadership did a mistake by not going for one of those deals, basically saying, "Okay, we will take this, but we will continue to negotiate to try to improve our uh, our position." But anyhow, this is history and uh, contrafactual uh, uh, reasoning, which is not uh, good history science. But anyhow. Okay, Taria Rod Larson, thank you very much for coming on the France 24 set. And thank you for watching this interview from The Hague in the Netherlands. Fake news, noun. False stories that appear to be news spread on the internet or using other media. At France 24, our job is to provide you with information that's been verified. We check sources, we check facts, we sort what is true from what is fake. At the France 24 observers, we verify photos and videos circulating online. If they're fake, we let you know and tell you how we spotted them. In fact or fake, we dig into viral stories around Europe to shake out the truth from the trash. Every day on Info Migrants' website, we fight fake news spread on social networks about the reality of migration. France 24, news based on facts. Liberté, égalité, actualité.